Would-be writers who come to London always have a Soho phase, but I didn't begin mine until Peter Cook finished his. No, I always remember going left to this morning. In the 60s, when he started Private Eye and the establishment satirical nightclub, Soho revolved around him while the rest of us looked on enviously from a distance and previous Soho headliners were driven to the wall. Good heavens. There we have it. Karl Marx now moves to North London. I wonder what he would have made of it all. Well, he, he had a very harsh life here, Clive, you know. He had a very yeah. harsh life, had no money. He, entirely supported by Engels. Yeah. The coin of Engels used to arrive through the post, which kept... Uh, Writing potential bestsellers like Das Kapital. Das Kapital, yes. Yeah. I think that was Engels' idea in any case. Yeah. Well, do Das Kapital, you used up enough of mine. Whereas if he'd waited another 110 years... He could be... He, well, he would have been in Annabelle's every night, wouldn't exactly. he? Exactly. Or, or Tramp, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, indeed. As its name satirically suggested, the establishment was an anti-establishment establishment. Lenny Bruce flew in from America to help the local wits challenge the values of the upper classes who all turned up to watch. Now the abrasive voice of satire is only an echo and Cook's old rostrum is someone else's restaurant. He finds it hard to suppress a sob of nostalgia as he reminisces. What was up here? Up here was a brothel. <laughs> there are comedy clubs all over the place now, and yet when you started this one, it was actually a risk, wasn't it? Well, I, I didn't think it was a risk at all. I, my dread in my last year at Cambridge was that somebody else would have this very obvious idea to do a political cabaret, um, uncensored by the Lord Chamberlain. And I thought it was a, a certainty, especially when it's the only good title I've ever thought of. I think the establishment is a very good name. Um, and that was my only worry, and it was financed by people joining it before, before it opened. You better tell our younger audience uh, what the Lord Chamberlain was, because they don't know. Well, I wasn't quite sure either. Um, he was a man who could censor any stage play or anything that was produced on the stage. And I remember him objecting to the angle of a ladder that was brought on in some play at the Royal Court. He said it couldn't be at that angle, it had to be either there or there. <laughs> And um, in Beyond the Fringe, we, we had a sketch where we played, um, it was about um, cigarette advertising, and the opening line on, in the text said, enter, enter three terrible old queens. And that was censored, uh, so we changed it to enter three aesthetic young men, and that was all right. <laughs> the journalist did a lot of talking about the London equivalent of La Dolce Vita. What actually went on? There were a few fist fights. So uh, members of the audience got upset from time to time, especially when uh, Lenny Bruce was on. I remember one wonderful evening, a very upper-class couple were there with their daughters, and they sat through every four-letter word in the, in the world, and suddenly um, Lenny mentioned the word cancer, whereupon there was a shout of, Fiona, Caroline, Deborah, cancer, out, out, and they all <laughs> stormed out. Did you get involved in any fights yourself? I, I never fought. We, um, I was once hit round the, the face with a, by a handbag. Um, Siobhan McKenna was upset about something. I think being asked to leave was what upset her. And, uh, she was an Irish... Uh, an Irish actress uh, of a fiery temperament and a great stage presence, and a great off-stage presence as well. <laughs> I, was, I, I thought I was ushering her politely towards the door, and she, her handbag whisked out and caught me round the chops. And she said, these are Irish hands and they're clean. I said, it's an English face and it's bleeding. Not particularly funny, but uh, it's all I could think of saying. When you started the club, what sort of people came? Well, I remember the Cray twins came round when we were just about to open. And uh, they said, oh, it's a very nice place you've got here with uh, a lot of lighting and a lot of projection equipment and so on. It would be dreadful, wouldn't it, if, if, if the wrong element came in and started uh, smashing the place up. And uh, we were willing to put people on the door to keep those types of element out because we know these elements and we can keep them out. And I knew perfectly well that they were indeed the element that I didn't want to have in. And uh, so I said, well, thank you very much. It was very kind of you, but the police are just around the corner. And if there's any trouble, I'm sure we'll call them and they'll do their best. Never saw them again.